What up, peeps? Welcome to another movie review. We back. We back in the theaters, man. We back in the squeaky. We've been hearing y'all in the comment section. Yo, go back to the movie theater in the squeaky chair. We are back for you because it, it just feels right. We back in the movie theater. And I'm back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Smile. We back on the hard tip, man. It's that time of year. It's that time of year. It's fall, the leaves are falling, it's getting dark early, it's chilly. Now it's time to get scared at the movie theater. Smile is the creepy movie involving a doctor who has a traumatic experience with one of her patients and after that she starts experiencing these terrifying visions right after that. So it's just like, yo, what just happened? And now she must deal with her past in order to navigate this troubling events that are haunting her henceforth. So now we gotta see, how is she gonna get through this? How is she gonna get out of this? The movie star Sosie Bacon, who in fact is Kira Sedgwick and Kevin Bacon's daughter. I was like, oh snap. I didn't know they had a daughter acting. She was in um, The Mayor of Easttown with Kate Winslet. And so, cause I looked her up. First of all, I wanna say this about horror movies. I feel like horror movies don't get the respect they deserve as far as acting performances. Um, I feel like, you know, the snooty Academy Awards, I feel like they hesitate on acknowledging performances in horror movies. I feel like personally that, you know, to really convey fear, that's a talent. Like, you know, I really believe that these people in these horror movies are terrified and they're going through a lot and the beats in the horror movies are extreme, intense. Like you, you're going through intense trauma, intense fear. Um, and so in some of these movies, it's like, yo, man, it looks exhausting from an acting standpoint to be acting terrified. Like look at uh, Toni Collette in Hereditary, for example. She got ignored by the Oscars and I feel like her performance was one of the strongest of the year. But I feel like it probably got ignored because I know it's a horror movie, you know what I'm saying, whatever. But now, nah, man. And I feel like watching Sosie Bacon in this movie Smile and to see her transition from a normal doctor, you know, helping people through their own emotional crisis to then unravel into this woman who's terrified, scared, trying to hold on to her own sanity, not being believed by people. I'm feeling these emotional beats throughout the film. And then you got to emote, you got to cry on cue. I'm like, yo, man, respect these horror movie performances, man, because they out here delivering. You got to act terrified. As soon as they say action, you got to be balls deep in terror, man. Respect these performances out here. She gives a great performance, and I'm not surprised. Kevin Bacon, Kira Sedgwick, your parents, it's in the jeans. I'm a big fan of those two, so uh, that was cool to find that out. Uh, Sosa gives a great performance as the lead in this. The movie is essentially about, it's always frustrating to horror movies because nobody believes you. That's the main thing. Something goes wrong, you know, the friend or the husband or the lover or the family member asks, what's wrong? And then they lie and they just be like, what's wrong? Oh, you, nothing, nothing, don't worry about it. Worry about it. If I see something traumatic, I'm telling you when you ask. I may not volunteer the information depending on who you are, but if you ask, Tony, is everything all right? No, no. I saw a patient kill herself in front of me. She cut her whole face and her throat loose in my face. I just saw that today. Sit in that, marinate in it. Let people know something ain't right. And after that happened, I've been seeing weird shit. I've been seeing weird shit. I feel like I see her face in the kitchen. Talk it, talk it out, explain yourself. Cause then when you let stuff build and then you start looking crazy, give us the full transition. And if we love you, we gonna believe you. Unless you was a liar from the jump, but th that's not the case. If I know you as somebody that's keeping it together, that's holding it, you know, holding it together. I'm gonna believe you when you say you saw somebody upstairs in the window, or you saw somebody behind you. You know what I mean? So that's always frustrating to see in horror movies where it's just like, you know, people don't believe you for whatever reason. And you know, the, the characters might have had their reasoning because of her past, but forget all that, man. Just just follow the pattern and when something changed. She was normal this day. She comes home from work this day and she's like losing it. 
then you gotta be like, all right, what happened? Let's retrace your steps. When she sees something traumatic like that at work, that's when everything starts to happen. And it's just like, how does she get out of this? Now, you might want to skip this part because I'm, I'm gonna go into a spoiler review. Because I know y'all always be like, spoil it, spoil it. So before I do that, I'm gonna give the review of Smile. Now, Smile, I, had, I jumped internally a couple times. Images in the movie stayed with me later on. Like when I turned the, the light off in the garage, I was like, yo, was somebody standing over there? What if I saw somebody standing over there smiling at me? That's the sign of a good movie. If something sticks with you after you leave the film, then you'd be like, all right, you did your job. So you get, you get, you get a saxophone just from sticking with me. I believe the performances. I was compelled the whole time, pissed off at some of the characters, shocked, didn't know how it was gonna end up. So for that, I gotta give it some good marks. But forget all that, you wanna know the smooth jazz review of Smile. Well, here it is. Oh yeah, I'm giving Smile three and a half saxophones out of five. Maybe, maybe even a flaccid four, but I'm gonna give it three and a half saxophones out of five. And don't be out here smiling at people, man. They did that for the promo. They was just like, yo. I don't know how to do the creepy smile because it's a lot. You got to get the smile just right to have a creepy smile. Unless y'all think my smile is creepy off top. And there's a smile creepy to you by nature. If somebody's just smiling at you, are you creeped out? And let me know in the comment section below before I spoil this. So... In the movie, Sosie Bacon plays a doctor. She deals with uh, patients that are coming fresh in. It's kind of like an, an, an emergency situation where she's like, there's a doctor with somebody that just went through some traumatic shit, right? So she's been working hard. She's been working long hours. So they were already concerned that she's overworking herself. So she goes in and Kumar from Harold and Kumar, you know, go to White Castle is her, you know, supervisor. So she gets a patient. That comes in there, she had just witnessed somebody kill themselves at a university. So the patient comes in, she's terrified, she's hiding in the corner, and she's, you know, trying to get to the root of it. And the girl is just like, yo, I've been sick. First of all, I'm not crazy. I'm a PhD candidate. You know, I am not crazy. But I've been seeing visions nobody else sees but me. You know, believe me, and like this is this stuff. It really feels like it's happening, and it's something coming for me, and it's, it's, it's saying things to me, and I, I think it's coming to kill me. So she's just like, well, well, you know, every word she says, kind of throwing the patient off, and she's like, you, you think I'm crazy? This, that, and the third. Anyway, she looks back up at the doctor when she says, "Look at me." She looks back up, terrified. It looks like she sees something behind her. She falls backwards and she's just screaming bloody murder. And so, so much so that Sosie Bacon turns away from her because it looks like she's just literally dying there on the floor. Turns away from her to call um, security, whoever they call in the emergency. She turns back around. The girl is standing there smiling. It's a creepy ass smile. She's no longer talking. She's just smiling. She's standing there. She has a broken piece of the glass that was broken when she flipped out. Has a broken piece of glass. She cuts her face from here, goes all the way down, cuts her throat, dies right there in front of Sosie Bacon. She sees the whole thing. So they come in there, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You gotta take some time off, man. This is a traumatic, you know what I mean? And she wanted to go back to work. So when she gets home that night, she's standing in the kitchen, obviously shaking. You know, she's pouring wine, she's standing there. And she sees the girl standing in her kitchen smiling. So she's just like, oh, she drops the glass. Her boyfriend, who's played by Jesse Usher from uh, The Boys, uh, A-Train, comes home like, everything okay? Oh, I just had a rough day at work. But she's, you know, downplaying, sweeping under the rug, you know what I'm saying? Not really going in there. And, um, you know, they sweep up the glass or whatever. So now she's seeing these visions of, of the girl that killed herself, smiling at her. You know, she's seeing her outside the window. She's seeing one of her patients smiling, just sitting there smiling. And then, you know, she's freaking out. She's calling security on that patient when the patient didn't even do anything. And it's just like, yo, I'm starting to freak out. So with all these hallucinations and all this stuff going on, and mind you, one of the police that were assigned to the case is her ex-boyfriend. She, he, You know, he shows up. So now, you know, She's seeing these visions. She's at home. She's tripping out. Um, she, she got a bougie ass sister. 
It's always up her. Hey, you work too much. This, that, and the third. She's just trying to push through these hallucinations. Once she freaks out at work, she's like, yo, supervisor's like, yo, take a paid week off. But I don't want to take a paid week off. Sit your ass down. You're doing too much here at the job. So she got to take a paid week off. So she at home by herself, idle hands. They got a cat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she's getting ready for her nephew's birthday party. She's she's doing the gifts. She's seeing weird shit. She's freaking out. Um, mind you, you know the the ex boyfriend was trying to come up. You good? You good? Trying to get back in her life. You can tell he still love her and whatnot. And so now she goes to the birthday party, trying to be normal. She's seeing crazy shit. She's unraveling. She goes to the birthday party. She bought she bought her nephew a train. She goes to the birthday party, opening the gifts. Everybody's looking at the gifts to open. Opens it up, it's a dead cat in the box. And everybody sees it. He's like, oh, oh, how could you do this? How can no, no, I didn't do it. And then she sees the girl at the party smiling at her and coming towards her. She's freaking out. She falls back into a glass table. Her sister is looking at her like, oh, just judgment. The nephew is traumatized, of course. So it's just like, man, she's freaking out. The boyfriend is like, man, what's going on here with the judgment face? Just like What's happening? She's unraveling, man. So she's trying to she's trying to really dig into what's been going on. Like, what's the pattern here? Why, why am I seeing these things? What's going on? So she goes to the ex-boyfriend's house, who's a cop, so he can dig into these files. What did the girl that that was my patient, I want to find out about the teacher she saw kill, kill, you know, kill himself, gets the info on that. So she sees a trail of people who witness the suicide, and then they themselves would kill themselves. It's like a train, it's like a chain of people seeing a suicide and then they end up killing themselves all with a creepy smile. So she's doing that. She goes to visit the uh, the professor that killed himself, goes to visit his widow. And then, you know, he's saying that the pictures he was drawing and somebody, some figure with a smiley face was on there and all this, that, and the third. And so she finds out that there was one person that, uh, kind of broke the chain. He witnessed somebody kill themselves. He didn't die because he killed somebody. So he killed somebody. So now it's like, oh, you can break the chain by killing somebody. So she goes to see him in prison. She acts like she's some kind of reporter or something like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Tell me the scoop, you know what I'm saying? He killed somebody. You gotta ha you gotta kill somebody, have have somebody witness that murder to kind of get the get the curse off you. He finds out, no, it was you, man. Why you coming here? He freaks out. And so now She's come to the realization like, yo, I have to kill somebody to get this up off me. So now she thinks about going to kill that one patient at the at the hospital that she said was smiling and her was really wasn't and got him in trouble. So now, you know, she thinks about going back to do that. She's hallucinating. She thought about it. And then her supervisor sees her in the car outside of the uh, uh, the hospital with a knife in the car. And he's just like, wait, wait, hey, man, what you doing with the knife? She drives off. And now she's at the point where let me go isolate myself. So whatever is after me is just gonna have to come get me by myself. There'll be no witnesses. So come, come as you are. We about to do this. So she goes into this the old house where she had a traumatic event happen because her mother uh, ended up killing herself ultimately with like uh, pills. Her mother was going through like deep depression, alcoholism, and the pills. Come to find out when she had an hallucination of her mom, you know, when she saw her as a kid. And her mom was like, help, you know, call call the police, help me out. And she refused to do so. So I think she was living with that guilt of, I just let my mom die. So once she sees her mom, and then the mom starts smiling or whatever, and then the, the creature that's been doing all this reveals himself, creepy looking, long face, smiley entity dude or whatever. And so um, the cold part is, she, she felt like she defeated him. She burned him with the lantern and then she walked away from the house. It was burning. She's like, yeah. Turns out that was all just a hallucination. She was still in that house. And the cold part is her ex-boyfriend shows up to check on her. She's like, no, why are you here? And so the thing comes back, does what it does, gets in her head, gets in, gets in her mouth, literally, and then controls her body, suicide. Ex-boyfriend watches the end. Listen, when people tell you, don't follow me, don't come for me, and they're going through some weird shit, and the ex-boyfriend is all in. He believes what's going on because he's seeing the video, he's following the trail of these, these cases. So he's the only one in her corner. If she's going off to be solo, let her be solo. Look, I know you love her. I know you love her, bro. But now, you got the curse. All you had to do was stay in your lane. 
Now you got the curse. That's how we ended it out here. That's the movie, man. Um, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I had a good time. Barbarian, Smile. These horror movies are 2-0 and for the season right now. So I enjoyed it. Uh, I recommend it. And you know horror movies, everybody's extremely picky with horror movies, but I enjoyed it. Like I said, three and a half saxophones out of five. But let me know what you thought about Smile in the comment section below. And if you saw it, did you did you think back to the first girl that was smiling? Because she looked creepy in that kitchen, and I still remember that visual. So I'd be like, every time I turn the light off in the garage, I'd be like, I'll be doing the extra look. Let me know if y'all be doing that in the comment section below. Also, let me know uh, what are your favorite scary movies of the year so far. Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.